how do DPI, resolution, pixels, picture size, and file size all relate? Hi everyone, I'm Leo Notenboom for askleo.com. And yes, if you saw me looking off camera, I had to look to see the list of things that all interrelate here. Pixels and DPI and sizes and sizes and sizes aren't always the same sizes and it gets really confusing really, really quickly. So what I want to do in this video, which is a companion video to the article of the same name, it's askleo.com slash 5947 if you want to play along. I'm not going to follow the article verbatim, but I am going to at least touch on most of the topics that are discussed in that article and actually show you by doing some of the things that I only discuss in that article. So the question is, what does it mean for something to have a particular size? And in order to understand that, we actually need to drop back to a couple of basics, a couple of concepts that are very important to understand or realize when we're talking about images. Now, hopefully by now, you may know that pictures on computers are represented by dots. Seriously, that's all it is. The fundamental unit of anything you see on any computer screen, on any print, piece of paper printed by a computer is the dot. We tend to refer to them as pixels or Pell, but everything you see boils down to a dot or a collection of dots. And that's where the second concept comes in. We start talking about resolution. Resolution means that for a given image, the number of dots horizontally versus the number of dots vertically. You'll often see this as a size measured as, for example, 1920 pixels by 1200 pixels. So it's very common for us to refer to a picture or even a video as having a given resolution. The video that I'm recording right now is in fact 1920 by 1080, which is a very common high definition television resolution. Now, size. Is that the size? Well, it is and it isn't. 1920 by 1080, as I referred to, has a little over 2.3 million pixels. So one of the ways we would describe the size is either as that 1920 by 1080 or as 2.3 million pixels, 2.3 megapixels, as it's often referred to. And that's something you'll see in the camera world a lot. Images or its ability to create a picture will be measured in the number of pixels in an image, and they'll commonly shorthand that to some number of megapixels. But that's why I say size and size are two different things. We talk about the size of the image in pixels, 1920 by 1080, or the size of the file on disk, which starts out as 2.3 megapixels or 2.3 million pixels. Now, the problem, of course, is that that just says the number of pixels. That doesn't include any of the other information, like, for example, color. Each pixel can be set to a specific color. Every pixel can be different, but every pixel has associated with it something that tells you what color it should be. In general, that's a combination of three numbers between 0 and 255, each representing red, green, and blue, often referred to as RGB. Now, the issue with RGB, of course, is that, okay, 0 to 255, I kind of sort of get that, that's a byte. And three of them together, well, that must be three bytes per pixel. So that means that at a minimum, our 2.3 megapixel image has in fact three times as many bytes to represent that information. That's the other kind of file size, the size of the file that might be written to disk. Enter in compression. Compression is all about math. That's really all it is. It's very convoluted, very complicated math, but the bottom line is by using algorithms on the information stored in your image, they can make the file smaller, physically smaller. It's still 1920 by 1080 on the screen, but it'll be something smaller than three times 2.3 megapixels when it's stored on disk.
There are two kinds of compression. Lossy, which means some of the information might be lost. The actual picture, the compressed picture, might not be identical to the original. And of course, lossless, which means the result, the compressed picture, will look identical to the original, even though the information has been compressed. When you're using lossy compression, of which, say, JPEG is one good example, it's one very common example, when you save a file in JPEG, you can choose just how bad you want that loss to be. There's a dial. It can usually be specified somewhere between 1 and 10 or 1 and 100. There's a range, and you specify somewhere in that range just how much loss you're willing to accept. Even at its least permissive, in other words, the closest to the original that you specify, JPEG compression is actually pretty good. But of course, if you dial that loss in so that it's allowed to be a little bit less exact compared to the original, files can actually get a fair amount smaller. At some point, you're going to notice the difference. That's why there's a dial. And it's going to depend on exactly what kind of a picture you're looking at. A picture of a cartoon or a comic where you've got a lot of solid colors will actually show the compression artifacts quicker than, say, a panorama or a landscape photo. PNG is a lossless compression, which means that no information is actually lost. What you get is exactly what you started with. The problem, of course, is that by not allowing for any loss, the result will be bigger. That is compared to, say, JPEG if you're doing something like a landscape. On the other hand, if you're doing something like a comic with a lot of solid colors, PNG might have the advantage. So those are all the things that kind of, sort of, contribute to the size of a file on disk. When you actually save the file, the color information, the number of pixels, and just how compressed the file will be, all contribute to determining how big that file will be on disk. So far, we've done nothing to change how big the file actually is when you look at it. That then starts to bring in another concept, dots per inch, or DPI. If you've ever done this, you may have run into a case where you look at a picture on your screen and you print that same picture and that resulting printout is tiny, absolutely tiny. It's actually not worth printing, it's so small. Typically, that's a difference between the screen having a lower dots per inch than a printer. A screen is, quite often, 75 dots per inch. A printer, on the other hand, typically starts at 300, which means if you're printing that 1920 by 1080 picture, it's going to take up a certain amount of room on your screen, but if you then take it to your printer, it might take up one quarter of that room, visually. The file hasn't changed. It's just that you can squeeze more pixels into, the, into a certain amount of space, and therefore that 1920 by 1080 ends up taking up less space on the paper than it did on the screen. So let's actually take a look at some of this stuff in action. What I'm going to do is bring up this article on Windows. And we're going to do a couple of manipulations. So here you can see the original image that we're talking about. Here's the resolution. The sidebar here is a very interesting one because you'll be introduced to a number of the very common resolutions that you'll see across multiple different devices. We've talked about compression. We've talked about the size on paper. And here is an image, an example of what compression can and can't do. We'll actually look at that here in a minute. Here's what I'm going to do. Here is actually the original picture we've been working with in this article. If you click on it, it's going to actually load the full 10 megabit 4288 by 2848 image. And there it is, except this image is actually visually bigger than that. I don't have that many pixels on my screen. You can see that the cursor has turned into a magnifying glass. That means that, in this case, Edge has already resized the picture down so that it will actually fit on the screen. The real picture, I'm going to click on the nose here, is that big. So I can't actually have the entire picture on my screen 
simply because it is that big. And that kind of resizing is exactly the kind of thing that you want to get used to being able to do in various tools. Now, I'm going to go back and this time I'm going to save the link as and have this image saved to my pictures folder. And we can see that the download has happened. I'm going to go ahead and close Edge right now. So here you can see the image, the original image, fullpuppy.jpg, and you can see the size that's listed there for the image. It's a 12.21 megapixel image. That's the resolution 4288 by 2848. And it takes 3.68 megabytes on the disk. It's a JPEG, so it's already been compressed to some amount. Now we're going to go ahead and double click it. That brings up the viewer. The viewer that I'm using here is FastStone Image Viewer. It's convenient for a lot of these kind of things. And one of the reasons that I like it is it actually includes several different very commonly used tools. Over on this side, for example, you can see that there are a number of adjustments. But the ones we're going to care about today are things like resize and resample and eventually crop. So let's start with resize, resample. This will allow us to change the size of the image on screen. Remember that I told you that we're actually looking at this on a 1920 by 1080 screen. So if we were to resize this to something a little bit appropriate, like say maybe 1920 by 1275, well, that's still going to be too big. So I'm going to change this to a 1080 high. In this case, that means it's a 1626 wide picture. And you can see, even though it's resized on the screen, there are these black bars on either side. And that's because what we call the aspect ratio, the ratio of the height to the width between the way the image was taken and the screen that it's being displayed on are different. You can see that it has preserved what's called the aspect ratio. That's the ratio of the width to the height. And in fact, there's an option here that allows me to make sure that that always stays the same. For photographs, you almost always want this to have been set so that you're not making the image look stretched one way or another. So we've got this new resolution. It's the same aspect ratio as the image was taken. It's 1080 pixels high and 1626 wide, we'll say OK. And nothing happened. At least that's what we think. What we're going to do now is save the file. I'm going to right click and save as so that we can actually see full puppy. And I'm going to call this 1080 so that we can actually see what the difference in file size and visual size is. So it's going to be called fullpuppy1080.jpg. You can see that the JPEG quality is 94. That's probably the quality that it came in as. If I wanted to change it, I have a slider here and you can see, this will be an important example, you can see the difference that it will make. The original file size, in other words, the true size of the bytes for this size of the file is 3.7 megabytes or 3,772 kilobytes. The new file size at a quality of 94 is actually significantly smaller, but we can go smaller yet. I'm going to take this down and down and down to about 50. Okay. And the new size is even smaller. It's less than 200 kilobytes. And if you look at it, you'll see that there isn't really that much of a difference. Or is there? If we zoom in, you can now see that things look just a little bit fuzzier. In fact, if I go even further to say 29, now you can really start to see these bl this blockish look on the image. That's what the compression ratio does. It gets blockier, but it gets smaller. Depends on what you want to do with the result. Let's have a look at this on full screen, and now you can really see the difference. This is a very highly compressed, very small file, but the price we pay is the quality of the image. So I'm going to hit escape. We'll go back to this. I'm going to go back up to 94 because I really liked that. I like high quality image. I think um, Penny, the puppy here we're talking about, uh, deserves something better. So now we're going to save it. And now if we go back, You'll see that there are two copies of this image 
fullpuppy.jpg, which is big, it's 3.68 megabytes, and fullpuppy1080, which is 599 kilobytes. If I double click on one, well, it fits the screen because it had to get resized by the program. I've just moved on to the next one and you can't see the difference. That's because it's architected for this specific screen size. So one of the things that is very, very important when you're passing photos around is to understand the size of the photo and its size on disk compared to what people are going to want to be able to do with it. This smaller photo is great for sharing on social media. It's great for sharing an email. In fact, it's especially great in sharing for email because it is smaller. It results in a smaller email. It's a smaller attachment and it is therefore going to get to where it's going faster and stand a higher probability of actually making it through into your recipient's inbox. Now, there's another kind of resize that I want to show you. We're going to go ahead and go back to full puppy here. And this time I'm going to bring up what they call the crop board. So what we have here is a copy of the photo that we're looking at. And now I'm just going to drop, draw a rectangle. What I'm going to do is make a smaller photo, not by resizing the image, but I'm going to make it smaller by only selecting a portion of the image. So if I now crop, all of a sudden the image got bigger on our screen, but in reality, it's a smaller image. You can see up here in the corner, it says it's a 1632 by 1154. That's just me hand picking an area to crop. The net result is if we now save this, and we use the same JPEG quality, full puppy cropped. Now, if we go back, we can see we've got these three different images. Full puppy cropped is also 557 kilobytes. The piece we selected has not lost any resolution. It is exactly as detailed as the original because we didn't resize it. What we did is we selected an area of it, which means that if there is a specific area in a photo that is the most important, maybe it's somebody's face, maybe it's a portrait, maybe it's a puppy. One of the approaches to deal with that is to crop the photo to be something smaller so that the net result is also then something smaller. And of course, you can do both. One of the things I could have done, in fact, let's just go ahead and do that. So here's fullpuppy.jpg again. You can see it's 4,000 by 2,800 you know, pixels, the one we started with. So let's do two things with it. First, let's bring up the crop board and we'll crop it to something that's still pretty big, right? But is, I'll just call it the meat of the photo, uh, the part we really care about the most. I'm going to play with it a little bit just because I want Penny to be completely viewed and the water bottle, not so much. Okay. So we've cropped it. The net resulting crop you can see here is 2931 by 1888. So it's okay ish, but there we've cropped it. Let's go ahead and also resize it. This time I'm going to resize it by percent, I'm just going to make it 50% in size, half the size. Boom. Now you can see that it is smaller, but it now fits on the screen. So we've actually made the image a little smaller by cropping it, and we've made it a little smaller by changing the actual size in dots per inch, the actual size of the photo as viewed. Finally, we could make it even smaller on disk by saving with a lower compression ratio or compression setting, but I'm not going to do that. Now, one of the things that I want to emphasize, I really honestly believe that one of the most important things you can do is experiment with this kind of stuff. I really believe that you need to find yourself a good, capable image editing tool. It may be one that comes on your system. 
It may be a free one like FastStone Image Viewer. It may be something you use for work like Photoshop if you want to go whole hog. But the bottom line is you want to experiment. And one of the most important things you do when you experiment with this kind of stuff, make a backup. You knew I was going to say it. What you want to make sure you do, and I took very careful steps as I went through this, was never, ever change the original. Always make a copy because that way, no matter what you do to your copy, you'll always have the original to go back to. And it's more than just what you're doing while you're playing around editing. It has much more to do with what you'll want to do with the photo maybe a year from now. Maybe that low resolution version that you uploaded to Facebook isn't the one you then want to include in your year end Christmas photo. Maybe it's not the one you want to actually have printed in a physical book at some point for some reason. That low resolution image, when you take it to Facebook, is going to look horrible when you actually try to print it. So hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully this demonstrates a few of the ideas behind image editing. As always, let me know in the comments below if there's something specific that I just glossed over or went too quickly. Um, this is one of those things that I think is very important at a very basic level. These two things, both resizing and cropping in order to make your images more useful to others. Naturally, there's a ton of information out on the Internet for learning to do this kind of thing. Uh, there's a lot of how to stuff specifically for fast stone. I'm sure their help stuff is is actually pretty good. Bottom line, though, is that this is worth learning and I'd love to see more people put in a little bit more effort when they share their photos online and not lose their originals in the process. As always, thank you for watching. For more comments on the original article, and I honestly recommend going through the original article as well as watching this video, I touch on a number of other points. I say things in different ways that perhaps may make some of the confusing terms a little bit more uh, understandable uh, as you go through. The original article is askleo.com slash 5947. You'll find comments, you'll find updates, you'll find related articles. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Leo Notenboom. This is AskLeo.com. Take care.